Good morning, Mape, and welcome to Monday. Hope you're ready to get some work done, because we got a lot to do. Welcome back, my fellow duplicates, to Oxygen Not Included. So in this episode here, we're actually going to focus back over here on this machine down here that we tried out a few episodes ago. The idea was to actually make this so cold that it would liquefy oxygen. However, the original plan had this thing stopping at zero degrees Celsius. Since then, the update has happened to the mod and therefore we can actually make it cold enough to make liquid oxygen. So we're going to reverse this back to the original plan and start to make a little bit of liquid oxygen and get the petroleum flowing again. As it is currently, the system does not work anymore, so I have to do something with it to begin with. The other thing that we're working on here is a bunch of space ranching. So we already have our little ooh ooh slicksters down here. And these are the little pink guys and they are outputting quite a bit of hydrogen. Therefore, we should take some of that hydrogen and we should turn it into power. One thing that I was going to look at here uh, that I mentioned in the last video here is the shine bug reactor. However, currently it isn't working, so I'm not going to be able to cover that right now. Also, I don't have any shine bugs left, even though I left some food out for them. That apparently was not enough to keep them happy. Oh, never mind. Hello, shine nymph. Welcome back. You heard me talking about you, didn't you? We're going to go ahead and build a little ranch for the guy. See? Told you I left food out. Nom, 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 nom. I didn't forget about you. It's not my problem that you all died. Well, welcome back to Monday, everybody. Hopefully you guys are preparing to have a wonderful week. I am. I've got the caffeine flowing. Let's get this going. Woo! Step one. All right. So first things that we wanted to do over here was to actually go ahead and pump out the liquid oxygen as it flows in here. You can see that I already had some pumps down there. And what we're going to do is store that inside of tanks. So we got some tanks over here. These are the high flow dudes. That actually works out really good. Believe it or not, we could probably put them right over here. Just store up a bunch of liquid oxygen in this spot. There's some other equipment that we've built over here because we had the opportunity to do so. And I could probably rearrange some of this here because what we have is we have polluted water flowing out of the petroleum generator here. And that's heading back over here to this oil well and everything inside of here. I've also hooked up an automation signal right here just to turn this thing off so it doesn't flood. As you can see, we have more than enough crude oil at the moment, so I don't need any more of that. I suppose another spot for the liquid oxygen would be kind of right down in this area. Uh, I, ultimately, I want to have the rockets over here, so that's kind of where I want to pipe that. As you can see, we've started to dig into this biome down here. And we'll eventually get down here to the long hair slicksters. Those little guys are going to find their way right over here. Oops, I guess I deconstructed that tile. Let me go ahead and rebuild that one. <laughs> and we'll have long hair slicksters over here. And then we're going to have the hydrogen slicksters over here on the right. And then maybe some other slicksters as we kind of move up right here there. Um, I should build a hatchery though, as we kind of get more and more critters here. We will want them to hatch out quickly and then actually move them around to different areas. So let's take a look at that real quick. How many incubators could I put in this area? Ooh, I could put a total of eight. And that's pretty good because then I could have a critter drop off right there and we can automatically wrangle anything that I don't want in that area. Ha! And more importantly, the critters can't escape because they're in space. Take that. All right, let's go ahead and copy this little blueprint right over here. Boom, that works pretty good. And then we'll do a pneumatic door in and out of this area with a bit of window tile, why not? Actually, I might wanna go ahead and just put a butcher station inside of here. That way, if we get too many critters and we can't do anything with them, we can just get rid of them. Turn them into food. Hmm, what do you think about that? Little slickster, terrified. However, before that tragedy happens, we're going to go ahead and figure out what I need to do here. So much pipe spaghetti. Uh, oxygen's flowing this way and that way and then that way. Oxygen's also flowing all the way up here. Gosh, I have so much. Um, hmm. <laughs> do you think liquid oxygen will be cold enough to go from here all the way down over there? I think it will be. Okay, so here's how this is going to work. If I snip this right there, and then I go ahead and do this number, 
right here. If this pipe backs up, which means everything else is filled, then I should be able to pump oxygen down here. But what that means is that we're not using oxygen to fill these suits, we're not using oxygen to go inside of here and convert it to hydrogen, and we're not sending it all the way up over here. So that's only if we have extra oxygen. Okay, so another thing I'll want to put inside of here is a thermal sensor. If it gets too cold, then we're going to turn that off. Or maybe if it actually goes to become a vacuum, we should turn that off. I think I'll put a couple of sensors in there just in case. So I did down a couple of extra mods here. The suppress notifications was one mod right there. Not sure if that was the exact name for it, but there's a suppress button that I can press here just to kind of turn that little overlay off for those that are not necessarily connected to automation things. So for example, all of these right down here, I can hit suppress. I should be able to copy that setting and then go boom. There we go. And now we don't have all those overlays showing up constantly. That's nice. All right, so this is done. Let's go ahead and just kind of seal it back up. Now, let's see here. What else do we want to do? Kind of doubt we're actually going to get extra oxygen out of this. Those guys are running pretty hard to keep up with everything. Although it does look like it's about ready to complete all of that. But that's until we go ahead and add even more slicksters down here, which will happen here pretty soon. Because look at that, we even have an extra little egg back there. What do we have in the printing pod? Hmm? Oh, jeez. We have even more of these little adorable slicksters. My piece is being overrun by them. Let's go into the food tab and see if we can... Oh, darn it. We don't have a critter trap. Oh, no. Because we don't have plastic. Mm. Oh, wait. That shouldn't be a problem. I should, be able to, I should still be able to place it. Hey. Game, I have a mod for this. <laughs> I should be able to still put it down. Thank you. See, that's why we got to get this thing up and running again so that I can make more plastic. Right now we're out of petroleum that's found its way all the way up here. Oh, jeez. Look at all this hydrogen. More hydrogen. More, more, more. Okay, what do we got going on here? Not exactly what I wanted. You don't need to flow down here. Nope. And you don't need to flow back up there. The water should just go into these tanks right here and wait to be turned into crude oil means this thing should also be connected. There you go. All right, there we go. Cleared all of that water out. So we can get rid of that. We don't really need it to hang out here anymore. So we'll just get rid of that pipe. And we can also get rid of this tank. Okay, so here's a thought that I'm working through right now. Do I output enough water from this petroleum generator to where I could provide enough oxygen to keep this thing hot enough so that it continues to produce more and more petroleum. Hmm, <laughs> hmm, If I let the polluted water flow, or if I just let any of the water flow, essentially down here, then I could make oxygen on the spot. I can also make hydrogen on the spot, which I'm not really sure what I'm going to use hydrogen for. Maybe pre-cooling the oxygen even more. <laughs> but, um, yeah, that might actually work because I was thinking about expanding it up here But right now this stuff's already working and it's feeding the base and to be honest, it's doing a pretty good job right now And it's relatively balanced. I'm not really ever producing more oxygen than I need up here a Little bit. I mean this goes anywhere from 30 to right now 165 is about the most oxygen I've seen inside of that tank Which is still not filling up the tank. It's just kind of going up and down depending on what my dupes are doing so I tell you what, I'm gonna try something. We're gonna see if it works. Okay, so right down here I built an advanced electrolyzer. We're going to go ahead and put this on a nice metal tile. That way we'll keep it nice and cool. But this way I can feed either water or polluted water to this thing and output oxygen or polluted oxygen. Either of those will actually work in this situation because it's just going to turn into liquid oxygen, which is only clean yeah so that's one way to get rid of the polluted oxygen is to convert it into liquid as far as the pipe that's running right here well we'll just kind of move that all right so the output of this machine here is going to be hydrogen we can go ahead and plug that into this line over here on the left we do have a nice long gas bridge there we go we can go ahead and do that number 
And this can be used for a couple of things. You can see that right over here we have the petroleum generator. One of the issues I had here was that this petroleum generator was getting too hot. We ended up building up a lot of steam inside of here rather than getting the water out of it. So I think what I want to do is actually connect these two thermally and then have a shutoff for this unit you know, over here on the left. It also outputs a lot of carbon dioxide, which I should be able to go ahead and pump that carbon dioxide out of this down here. Although I don't see a way of doing this without venting pretty much everything over here on the left. Maybe I can do this number. Maybe I can convert this to a metal tile. Let's see here. If I put a door right there, then that will allow me to get in, which means I can go ahead and build background tiles right there. And then I could seal that up and that would more or less keep everything nice and closed without bringing all of the hydrogen into here. Aha. And then I can set up a thermal sensor right here. I'll probably run some sort of restrictor on the hydrogen that's flowing in here so that it doesn't get too cold. Okay, I don't need to restrict this at all. What I can do is just use a thermal coupled door right down here to do what I need it to do. So if I get rid of everything right down here, <laughs> <laughs> move this door and this door. Well, not necessarily move that door. Um, what am I trying to say? I can see it. I can't explain it. There we go. Two metal doors. And then this one is a door right there. No, that's not right. A two metal tiles and then a door right here. That way we can thermally connect this side to this side, cooling all of this area down. Okay, so somewhere down here, I should go ahead and build a gas pump. That will be for the carbon dioxide that comes out of here. So we can actually build it right here. I think that's already connected to the automation wire. Sweet. So I don't even need to do anything there. Now I can go ahead and take this one and build it right there. That's going to give me the overall temperature in this area. Everything else is getting converted to insulated tiles just like this. And we'll put this door right there. That way we can cool this down. Boom. It will turn into a liquid down here instead of a gas. And then that water will eventually find its way up here to the electrolyzer. As far as how much water and what needs to be pumped over here, I don't think that's quite all that important right now. I have a vent right down here, so I should have a source of water if I need it in order to make more and more crude oil. I think it's more important to take the water from here and pump it over to there so that I can make liquid oxygen. <laughs> There's so many pipes everywhere. Okay, so oxygen flows out of here. Hydrogen flows over there. You know what? I'm not going to pre-cool the oxygen. I don't think there's a reason for it right now because ultimately I want to keep this thing warm enough to where it actually functions effectively. If it gets too cold, then it won't be efficient. So a little extra heat, I don't think it's gonna hurt. Ooh, we got ourselves some pip eggs. Hey, do we have some incubators that are, nope, not yet. <laughs> it's all right, at least we can sweep them up. Oh my gosh. Listen to all of those fish down there. Sure do have a lot of them. They just go completely off the screen. Look at that, I think there's, I've had about three deliveries from the printing pod for Paku down there. Okay, so here we go. This thing is up and running already. Although it doesn't have any power. That's not surprising considering since the last time this thing was running, we did not have a transit tube system, which is an absolutely huge consumer of power. Not only that, our natural gas is completely dormant here. Next activity is in nine cycles though, so not too far off. Hey, there we go. Just like that, petroleum's up and running already. How about that? And we can see that this thing's running and we can see a little bit of water flowed out of here. And into there. <laughs> what about the gas inside of there? It's carbon dioxide. Perfect. Now, the temperature that I want to happen here, if it's below zero, then we don't want it to run. Or maybe 10 degrees is good to go. Okay, to show you what's going on here, let's hit the temperature overlay. You can see that this is really hot, and we're trying to take that heat out of here. So you can see that this metal tile is really, really cold. All right. I can see what I need to change already. This needs to be a metal tile so that we can conduct everything right there. 
I think we also need to go ahead and try to plan for the carbon dioxide that's going to flow out of this. <laughs> More pipe spaghetti, geez. All right, here we go. Carbon dioxide can flow up here instead of oxygen flowing in and then somehow find its way, um, yes, into this line right here. That's carbon dioxide. So there you go, dupes. Work that pipe spaghetti. So that carbon dioxide that comes out of here will ultimately find its way up to these little guys right up there. So the leafy slicksters will get to eat. Gosh, do I have enough shovels? <laughs> They're obnoxious. Uh, what do we got here? Long hair eggs. Hmm, I guess I need to go ahead and do some automation over here to kind of sweep this stuff up and move the eggs to where they need to go. Oh, that's a good thing. If we have the incubators right here, then we can just ship all the eggs. Boom, right up there. Maybe we put the eggs in a separate room and do the incubators in another room over there. Hmm, hmm, <laughs> hmm. Ooh, we got plastic up and running again because we can see that we have a critter trap that's been sprung. Hmm. Ooh, what have we captured though? Because my slickster is still over here hiding behind a satellite. Oops, I think Xenix has somebody. Bad day to be a hatch. Blech. All right, let's see here. What all is going on here? We have mm, this thing running. It's currently at negative 206 degrees Celsius. So that means this is liquid oxygen. Ha ha. Um, hydrogen's flowing over here, but I think it's backed up because it can't actually get rid of all the hydrogen I have. Just have too much of it. I've got a bunch of pipes that need to be deconstructed. <laughs> Can we get rid of those dupes? Sure seems like I'm going to put in another hydrogen generator. This whole base is just going to run off of like a hundred hydrogen generators, isn't it? Oh, wait, 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 wait. There goes carbon dioxide. Hey, there we go. Oh, it's going over here. Lucky plants getting all of your carbon dioxide just like that. Sorry, slicksters. Hold your breath, you'll be fine. Hmm? Thanks, Rex. Ah, uh, darn it. <laughs> Just when I said thanks, he decided to run away. So what would help our situation right now is if I started to store up this liquid oxygen. I need a tank. Now, I did get rid of the tank over here. That's okay. We're gonna put that tank down below this. <laughs> this just seems like the biggest mess ever. <sighs> Here, we'll just clean all of this stuff up. We don't need all of these weird ladders here. We'll just get rid of all of that. Hmm, we'll just make a normal s oop, oop. Boogies, did you get stuck? Rex, you're on the wrong side of the wall again. Oop, another leafy larva here. <laughs> so many slicksters. Speaking of that, we have another slickster over here. It's the frozen slickster. Now that guy likes to be really, 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 really cold. Hmm, which one should I put you in if you like to be super cold? I think right up here is a great spot for it because we have hydrogen right here. So if we need to cool down this biome, we can do so. So we're going to put the frozen slickster right in there. And that also means we can go ahead and do this number and then put floor pumps, which are going to be of liquid on the floor as compared to a gas wall vent. We'll still need a gas wall vent. We'll just kind of move it to a different spot. Hmm, we got a little bit of anti-gel right there. Let's take a look at this anti-gel. Turns the steam at 207 degrees Celsius. Turns into polluted ice at negative 85 degrees Celsius. Ooh, interesting. Specific heat capacity of ridiculous. Wow. <laughs> If we compare that to super coolant, you can see that super coolant, okay, it has even bigger specific heat capacity and has a much wider range. So anti-gel is kind of like a super coolant junior. That's a good way of putting it. Although we can see here that the thermal conductivity is not very high. So that's also something to keep in mind. I like that you can get it to around 200 degrees without it turning into something different. That's pretty cool. We'll go ahead and mop this stuff up. This actually would make a really, really good kind of liquid lock material. Hey, there we go, a little frozen slickster. Looks like a little cube of ice. Uh-oh. <laughs> I now have too much liquid oxygen. Hold up. So many different little things I gotta be looking at today. All right, the liquid is 
going to go right over here. Oh, you know what? Where are these guys at? We don't need a, a wall pump. We could just do a drain. Because, I mean, these guys are just going to... They're just going to give off a little bit of liquid, not a whole lot. So if we just put in floor drains, then we should be good to go. All right. <clears throat> Back to not being distracted. We need some more of these right down here. And we can flip this so that the inlet is at the top. Now this is liquid oxygen, so it will heat up once you kind of put it into a pipe. So let's see if we have enough ceramic to kind of move it down here, at least this far. Once we get it down here, it's not a big deal. Or at least I don't think it'll be a big deal. We'll find out. Okay, so I'm building up a bunch of tanks right down here for the liquid oxygen to flow into. That's all good. And... no, oh, I've captured my slickster. Mahong, do you want to free our slickster? No. <laughs> meep meep please meep sorry dude nobody wants to free you oh wait forever then has got you aha you're free <laughs> sort of i mean you'll be in this box forever but don't worry about it consumes carbon dioxide and it gives off anti-gel hmm but what temperatures do you like to live at that is quite the mystery. I don't know. Oh, wait, here we go. Frozen slicksters happen at between negative 60 and 10 degrees Celsius. Ethanol slicksters happen at negative 20 to 40. What about more of these guys? What do you get? The slicksters only happens when it's immersed in hydrogen. What's your problem? You're telling me that I need to give you guys a little ramp so you can go up here and play around in hydrogen? Is that what's going on? Ugh. Otherwise, we end up with long hair larva, which is between 20 and 60. And let's just face it, long hairs are pretty much useless. All right, Slickster, this time I'm going to get you. Come on. Come on over here to this trap. All right, so I put in a hydrogen generator over here on the left. That should kind of help keep this thing powered up. And then I'll put in some tiles back here to kind of keep everything sealed up. There we go. Slap a door in and we should be all good to go. Once I kind of put a airflow tile right down here, that'll be my last step. That way we can keep this generator nice and cool. Besides that, we can see that we have a lot of liquid oxygen over here. This thing's actually doing pretty good in that it's nice and cold. Maybe I set this to negative 150, so long as it's above negative 150. Then it runs. You don't want it to get too cold. The machine gets less efficient once it drops below 200 degrees Celsius. So it's currently not below that currently at negative 185 so that's pretty good i've gone ahead and tried to put a little bit of wallpaper back here just to kind of dress this area up a little bit <laughs> there's just a lot of stuff running around in the background and it's kind of annoying to look at so this should hopefully help had some obsidian laying around i think i dug it up from down here boogies dude you're kind of stressed out man what's up with you hmm are you not getting delicious food is that what's happening here what do we got? Some lice loaf, fried mushroom, gristleberry. Yeah, where's all the barbecue? And the bulls are still hanging on. That's probably a big source of it. Plus, I reduced the amount of critters I have here, so that might be another part of it, too. Oh, looks like we can make some tofu. We're not making any of that. Let's give that a try. How are the pips doing up here? Oh, they're doing pretty good. We need to set this up to be auto harvest which we did not do. And we can get rid of all of this stuff right here so that we don't block up the branches anymore. There we go. We shouldn't even need to have these ladders here anymore. The other pip rule that I have right now should allow these to be planted exactly where they need to go. Whoops. Hey, there's some barbecue. Mmm, <laughs> delicious. Hey, there's some more barbecue. Wow, that was at the exact same time, huh? Probably about time to go ahead and set up some auto sweeping in here. I went ahead and downloaded the mod that makes the sweeper arm work a little bit uh, in a larger area here. You can see that it's pretty much double the size. I guess you can kind of change how big it actually will, the area it'll affect. But this is a little bit nicer here, a lot easier to work with. So that way we can just put two of them down here and cover this whole area. Which means I can put conveyor loaders right there. <laughs> That way we can chip out this pit poop down here and make good use of it. Mmm, looks like the advanced electrolyzer is getting a little bit too hot here. 
That's unfortunate. It's all right, I got a good solution for this. We can go ahead and do this number right there and enclose it. Boogies, man. We got to work on this. Your stress is too high. Okay, priority level nine, solar table. Please! Boogies, come on down. There you go. Or not, you can just sit there and cry. I built this table just for you, dude. Ugh. Well, how, how, we got some coal. Don't you like that? No, not at all. You know what, if you're gonna be a, oh geez, stop affecting everybody. Here, go over in the corner. Ah, oh, fine. Come on, boogies. Go in the corner. There we go, that'll work. There you go, dupes. Figure it out. <laughs> Fellas? Just hang in there. Don't worry, we'll get something over there. You'll be fine. Just hold your breath. There you go. Nope. Need a, a few more. Dupes! There you go, you're free. Okay, let's see here. Do, do, do. This is running. That's running. We got hydrogen. It's going over here. That hydrogen generator has been hooked up to the same sort of automation signal. So all of these generators are hooked up to the batteries. As you can see, we don't really have enough power at the moment. It's kind of annoying. Mostly just running off of hydrogen right now. Oh, there we go. Now the natural gas generator is back. Maybe then I'll actually get some carbon dioxide. <laughs> Hmm, 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 yes, there we go. So I'm rolling, running the petroleum down here to the generator. There we go, so that's doing its job, which means this should get cold enough to go ahead and liquefy the oxygen that's inside of there. Come on now, you should be able to do that. Nope, you're out of power. Well, unfortunately, this here doesn't seem to work in space. Even though there is a mod that allows it to radiate some heat into the atmosphere around it, it isn't working, and this is not drywall. This is just wallpaper, just cosmetic. So it technically is still in space. So I guess I'm going to have to rework that a little bit. Hmm. <laughs> all right, so we'll get rid of all the stuff in the background here and let the atmosphere kind of flow up to this point. That should keep this nice and cool because everything down here is cooled. You can see that the temperature, yeah, it's not bad. So we'll redo that just like so. And then stick that down right there. Boom. All right, so there we go. Mmm, hmm, hmm, Carbon dioxide flowing out, hydrogen flowing in, oxygen flowing down, turning into liquid oxygen, and then flowing out and out. Did you just overheat in this little bit of pipe that I have from here to here? No, not surprise me. Hmm, well, I have a good amount of liquid oxygen down here. Although, the temperature is not all that promising. It's only negative 132 degrees Celsius. So things are heating up by the time they're getting down here. So I might have to work on this to kind of recool it back down to an acceptable temperature before I move it on to the next stop. Hmm, which means I might be able to actually use this little guy over here and some of its antifreeze or the anti-gel. That might be a good use for him. Man, look at all the hydrogen in here. <laughs> I think you guys got it covered. Oh man, we got a robot larva? What? This is the land of slicksters, is it? <laughs> we have so many slicksters, different shapes and sizes of all kinds here. Okay, what does the robot larva do for me? Diet, CO2, output, steel, what? Okay, so the weirdest thing about this base is that I'm running a mod where I act, I produce a ton more carbon dioxide. But the one thing I don't have enough of in my base is carbon dioxide. Okay, now it might be because I'm venting it right here. So we can, we can stop doing that. But... <laughs> hmm. Hmm, 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 hmm. Okay, let's go ahead and put a robot slickster down here. Because, geez, I would like to have uh, some steel. Let's take a look at this guy. What kind of temperatures do you like to live in? Oh, a comfort range of 250 to 470 degrees Celsius. How nice. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. All right then. Well, this is definitely not going to work here. So I guess we're going to have to copy this up and build yet another spot for slicksters. However, I've got the perfect machine to make you happy, Mr. Robot Larva. And that's going to be this machine. 
The Blast Furnace! <laughs> yes. However, everything inside of here is absolutely going to melt. So... That's not good. The critter drop off plus 200 degrees Celsius. I don't think that's going to be enough. <laughs> uh, the grooming station. Hmm. Plus 200 degrees Celsius. That too may not survive. Regardless, that's the highest temperature thing I have right now. So we're going to try it. However, that little robot slickster here is going to have to happen in the next episode. As far as what we completed today, we definitely got this liquid oxygen system up and running and I somehow have made some really hot liquid oxygen. <laughs> Hopefully we can get the temperature down on that. But until then, it looks like it's actually working out pretty decent. We're flowing water out over here, we're bringing it back in. It is outputting polluted oxygen, which is interesting. And that is turning into liquid oxygen. So that's working pretty good. And we're building up a little bit more petroleum as we go. So that's good. We might even be able to get a little extra here and use that to run up here for more plastic, which is currently what I'm trying to make so that we can travel down here a little bit faster and then eventually set up our rocket station. Today seemed a little bit difficult. We had a lot of problems to solve, but we got through it. So hopefully you guys have enjoyed this little episode here of Oxygen Not Included. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a great day. I'll see you again next time. As always, guys, stay awesome. Peace. Brothgar out.